Okay, so it's been a long time coming, but our goal for this video is to get a grid system working on our placement system because for right now, you can kind of place things wherever. So let's get right to it. Okay, so picking off where we were last video, what I want to do is have a button to where, um, like an actual like physical button on your keyboard. So like, let's say the user presses G, I want that to turn on like grid snapping mode so you can actually snap to grid. And then you'll be able to play stuff with a little bit more accuracy. And I'm gonna implement this in such a way to where you could easily change the grid size if you were to add the extra functionality. But for this specific demo, we're just gonna be using a basic you know grid size. So to start, we first need to keep track of a grid size variable in the actual class here. So in the set meta table block, I'm going to add a grid size equals zero. It's going to start out at zero. And then we want to have an action when the user presses G for it to, you know, snap to grid. So I'm going to create a new action constant at the top called snap action, because this is going to be when the player wants to snap to grid. So we're going to say snap and then we can do context action service bind action snap action and then we want a function passing in the variables and we haven't actually implemented the function yet we'll do that in a minute and we want to send the enum.keycode.g so when they press g it will trigger this function <clears throat> and we don't want to forget at the very bottom we need to unbind all of our actions so i'm going to do context action service unbind action snap action, even though it doesn't do anything, it's always a good practice to make sure you unbind it when you create it, just so whenever you go out of build mode, it won't lead to any issues. And so now let's go and implement a new function. I'm gonna put it right above destroy. So function client placer toggle grid, toggle grid. So this will toggle the grid on and off. And then all we care about is the state. So I'm just gonna put underscores and all the other parameters. So with um, this function, it's gonna be pretty simple. So we're gonna say if state equals enum dot user input state dot begin, we want to say self dot grid size equals if self dot grid size equals zero, then one else zero. So this is the part of the script that's kind of like up to you to decide what you want to do. So basically what this does is we uh, look at the current grid size. If it's zero, then we set it to one. If it's one, then we set it to zero. So it just toggles it from zero to one. So when the grid size is zero, it's not going to snap to grid. When grid size is anything greater than zero, it'll snap to whichever grid size that we have. And so if you wanted to make this like a cycle grid, so like, you know, it could do 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, whatever, you could do the same idea that we have cycle object up here and just kind of do that for the grid size. So you like, you spam G to get a bunch of different grid sizes. But for now, this is what we're going to do. And then going forward, we need to go to the render preview. So in render preview, we want to add a new local variable, say local position equals if self.grid size is greater than zero, then we want to snap to grid, which is a function that we haven't implemented yet. And we want to pass in the cast.position and then the self.grid size. And then else we want to just send in the cast.position. So this local position is just going to replace our cast.position inside the cframe.new. So it'll be cast.position when grid snapping's off, i.e. grid size is zero. Otherwise, we want to actually snap it to grid. So let's go make that function. And we're making this a local function just because it's a pure math function. We're just doing some math to a vector. You could obviously make it an actual class function if you really wanted to, but it's up to you. And so this will take in a position and then a grid size. So what we basically want to do here is return a new vector three, so vector three dot new. And then in size of here, we want to, I'm just gonna put a new line to make some space. We want to snap it to grid. So what does that mean? So there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, but the way that I'm going to do this is using math.round with the pause.x divided by the grid size and then times the grid size. So what we're basically doing here is 
let's say you have a position like 6.5 and then you have your grid size which is like 2 so um 6.5 divided by 2 is like actually let's bring out a calculator i don't know this math off the top of my head 6.5 divided by 2 is 3.25 so 3.25 and then we round it so math that round 3.25 would be 3 so three is like the grid snap position that we have, but we divided it by the grid size. So now we need to scale it up by the grid size once again, which is two. So it's going to be six So because it's two times three. So let's just do that again from the top. So it would be 6.5 divided by two, which is three. And we want to floor that. So it's three times grid size, which is two, which is just six. So 6.25 gets rounded down to six. And then something like, 7.5 so 7.5 divided by 2 would give us 3.25 3.75 which rounded up gives us 4 4 times 2 is 8 so it'd be anywhere from like 6 to 8 on the x so just by like playing with that you can see how it's a good grid snapping function and so for the y we can just do pause.y because we don't want to actually change the y position. All we want to do is change the x and z position since we're dealing with a 2D plane where all of our like furniture and you know walls are going to be placed. And then for the z, we do the same exact thing as x. So pause.z divided by grid size times grid size. So we basically find like the grid increment. So we basically make this pause.z relative to the grid size. And then we find like whether or not it'd be like like zero or one basically relative to that grid size. And then we scale it back up again. We scale it down and we scale it up, but in between we round it. So now we can use this snap to grid function down here. Let's double check that it works. Yep. And then one more thing that I forgot to do earlier is we need to actually call the snap to grid function or just toggle grid function with the parameters that we passed in in our bind action so now it should work let's play this oh, well syntax error whoops where is it i put an extra comma here whoops so if we play it again press g we have grid snapping and this should work for every grid size. So let's go try a different grid size. Where did I put it? There we go. Let's try like four or something. I don't know. It's going to be a big grid size, but it should still work. So V hat G. And you can see it now snaps to a much larger grid. So if we want to place, place tables at like some defined increment, there we go. We can do that. So there you have it. That is your grid plot placement system in Roblox. And um, I don't live under a rock. I'm well aware this video is like like six months late. I'm sorry for that. I didn't know there'd be such a demand for it, but I, I've had it in the works for a long time. I just never got around to making it because I've been super busy recently. And sorry about that. I'm still alive. I haven't died yet, but um, I've just been really, really busy. So my content is just like not like being published very quickly. This is my mandatory fall video. We might get more than one fall video this year. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did. The code and stuff will be in the description. Um, yeah, and I'll, if you have any more ideas with this series, just let me know. Don't know if I'll get to it. Don't know if I'll get to anything anytime soon. But ideas are ideas. I love ideas. So, um, yeah. So I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.